my great pleasure to uh, present uh, Commissioner Johannes uh, Hahn, one of the most experienced European Union executives who has seen a lot, has seen a lot of crises, a lot of breakthroughs, uh, a lot of solutions, a lot of uh, problems, and you can definitely put things into perspective what we are experiencing right now. This last uh, week, uh, the Italian uh, Prime Minister Mario Draghi, who has a way with words and uh, capturing the, the zeitgeist in, in, in short motors, he said that Europe has to decide whether it wants uh, uh, peace or to keep the air conditioning on. So this whole crisis was uh, a rude awakening for the European Union and for the ways it works, for uh, its interdependence. The initial reaction was very quick. The question is uh, whether uh, European Union members will stick to this uh, solidarity and this uh, uh, agreement uh, as we move forward towards some very costly options from what it seems. Well, first, uh... Good morning to, to everybody. Um, second, indeed, um, it's, um, I'm now 12 years commissioner, third term, and I was uh, confronted at the beginning of each term with a very significant crisis, but it was usually an economic uh, uh, triggered one. Uh, now we have um, a very, uh, uh, so say, short frequency of, of crisis because um, uh, we started actually in 2019-20, uh, a few weeks or months after the current commission came into office with COVID. Now we thought that COVID is gradually um, uh, disappearing. We are confronted with a, a new crisis, with a war, which is, um, so to say, we are all not experienced in Europe to, to such an um, uh, event, and uh, I think the union today is different from the union uh, two months ago. And you rightly referred to the measures we took. We took quickly, but we could also uh, uh, took it quickly because we have carefully prepared it. We started already in autumn last year, of course, to think about scenarios. We have seen this uh, um, gathering of troops at the, uh, at the border to, to Ukraine. Of course, nobody could believe that this really uh, becomes um, a war. We thought it's a threatening, but nevertheless, we started to prepare because uh, uh, the sanctions we finally imposed first time ever faster than the US was the result of a, a careful um, a preparation as you said, sanctions are also costly for us, uh, and it differs from country, from member state to member state. So we had to calibrate, to be fair. But I think it was also, uh, I mean, if you look at the TV pictures, etc., and even today, pusher is something which triggers additional sanctions. So in a nutshell, I think uh, we managed really to impose first time sanctions and maybe we are not at the end of uh, the list of potential sanctions, uh, but we see a strong um, solidarity and unity amongst member states. Um, uh, and uh, because our aim must be uh, to, to settle this war as fast as possible, because it also has repercussion on us, but we should not forget it's also an attack against our way of living. My personal opinion is, uh, of course, there are different um, reasons why Putin finally uh, provoked this uh, aggressive war, but one of the reasons is definitely that uh, um, uh, prosperity and freedom was knocking on his door. Uh, because if you look at the development of Ukraine in the past couple of years, there was almost an um, uh, economic boom. And, um, and this you know, oh, oh, um, economic boom in freedom, in peace, and so to say also in, in the individual space for everybody 
to express his or her opinion. And I think this was a, a big fear for him. Um, and that's why he has provoked this. But this is unacceptable. And uh, we had to react. And I'm proud that um, the Europeans uh, stick together and react in, in a proper way. But unfortunately, I suppose we are not yet at the end. Uh, this uh, is true on the big picture, on the uh, unanimity of the first round of, uh, of sanctions. However, we see pushbacks. We see Hungary resisting to uh, limit uh, uh, oil uh, imports from uh, Russia. Uh, we see other member states, such as Germany, that has an uh, objective uh, problem of uh, limiting uh, or cutting imports of, uh, of gas. How is the European Union is going to treat those issues as we go into the next phase of the war, which seems to be more prolonged? Yeah, uh, we have now, just yesterday there was an agreement about, uh, so to say, the fifth round of sanctions. Referring to coal. In including the uh, import ban of coal, which is already something. Of course, <clears throat> we don't want to uh, further escalate, but if necessary, um, there is still something, and I think, uh, okay, it depends also on the discussion uh, um, inside the Union, but also on the, on the pressure on us as a reaction to the situation on the ground. Uh, I think we all have to commend the, the huge um, uh, uh, ability of the Ukrainians to defend themselves. We have to assist them, because again, it's also an attack against us, the way we are living. But at the same time, we have to, we have to contain the conflict, uh, uh, not to, to create, indeed, uh, a third world war. Mm -hmm. And it's also imp important to understand and to keep a kind of uh, cool head, even this is not uh, always possible if you look at the TV picture, but I mean, we need an economy, a European economy, which is also able uh, not only to finance the, the defense of uh, Ukraine, but also to assist them now in humanitarian issues and in the future in, in uh, so to say, the reconstruction. And also currently we have to see that uh, the COVID crisis has not yet uh, faded away. Uh, Union is still uh, affected like the others. <clears throat> the Ukrainian war definitely is slowing down the recovery. So I think we need to keep everything in balance. Uh, so say sanctions, which have an impact. <clears throat> and we have already seen um, that this time the sanctions are really uh, showing uh, concrete results. And uh, now we have to see how things evolve in the near future. Now, you talked about the European economy, and in the last crisis, uh, the, the COVID, the pandemic crisis, mm -hmm. there was a groundbreaking new tool, next generation, which you oversee through, uh, <coughs> through your work. The next generation, the uh, recovery fund, as it's called in uh, many countries, which worked. It helped the momentum for growth after uh, COVID. Shouldn't it be expanded to address this crisis as well? Why there is such resistance from within the European Union to, uh, to expand this modus operandi? Why is this taboo for more fiscal uh, role for the EU still strong in front of this new threat? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> one should um, um, keep in mind it's a um, recovery and resilience facility. So. I, I would like also to emphasize uh, the, the aspect of resilience, because uh, we are not only um, 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 trying to recover at the stage where we have been by the end of 2019, mm -hmm. but also never miss a good crisis um, uh, to, to make um, our economies more resilient, which means more competitive. Because as we can see, there is another crisis, and we have to see how to, uh, to assist <clears throat> all our um, um, member states and their economies, because at the end, we are all together in the single market. And the single market <clears throat> is only <clears throat> uh, effective 
and running well if everybody plays, so to say, its role. And therefore, we have, um, uh, so to say, this next generation EU um, uh, program, which is altogether 800 uh, um, billions, uh, more than 90 percent are allocated to member states. Uh, today, for instance, we uh, disperse uh, the first uh, uh, installment uh, to Greece, uh, altogether 3.55 billion, I think 1.67 uh, uh, grants, and the, the rest is uh, uh, loans. Um, and I think now we have to show and to prove that the money is well used is used to inject the European economy. And uh, I mean, since uh, the first issuance of bonds last July, we have now issued um, almost uh, 100 billion. Uh, this year, altogether, we expect uh, another 100 billion um, uh, issuance. So, uh, excuse me for the interruption. It's a, it's a tool that also helps the European Union yeah. finance itself through the international markets with low cost, making the euro a reserve currency, helping growth, it works. It works, but uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the figures for one reason, because on average we should raise 150 per year mm -hmm. in order to, to, to have these uh, 800 million um, uh, used, exhausted by the end of 2020. Six, so far we are below this average because uh, there is not yet cruising speed uh, in using this uh, by member states. Which means in return um, uh, we are well equipped to weather this crisis. That's why I think for the European economy as such the, the current next generation EU program seems to be at least for the time being sufficient enough. Talking about Ukraine is something else, because we don't know yet uh, what is needed in the future. Is it uh, for the next couple of weeks and months humanitarian aid? <clears throat> is it um, unlikely, but you never should give up hope uh, for the reconstruction, which would be something else? This, there we have to see how to finance it. I personally believe we should create something like um, the previous Marshall Plan, let's call it the European Plan, because we have offered in, um, uh, Ukraine now um, a European perspective, which, by the way, was always there. But um, if we are now helping them to reconstruct, it should also be linked in a way that the approximation to Europe can be accelerated. And then, on third, we have to see that the current war also has an impact on the wheat production. And this, again, has an impact on the food security, for instance, in our southern neighborhood. And therefore, um, we have uh, taken measures also inside the Union to increase the capacities of wheat production by allowing farmers to use um, uh, fallow land for one or two years, which helps to produce, hopefully, 20 million tons uh, wheat on top. But also this has to be financed. So we have different financing strands which we have to cope. But for the European economy so far, I think the current um, um, uh, program is sufficient enough. We have to prove altogether that it works. And if we can demonstrate added value, I would not exclude that in the future there is also uh, amongst those member states which are now more reluctant, uh, more openness if they see the benefit. Mm -hmm. Because those who are more reluctant are at the same time the ones who are benefiting from the single market more than others. True. Uh, so, however, I want to take it back to the European consumers and European, uh, European voters uh, in the end. The, the prices are hiking so fast. Most of the solutions are mid-term to long-term. The problem is short-term. Uh, is there a role for the European Union and the European Union budget with its role uh, of instigating uh, uh, initiatives? Is there a role for the European Union to, to assist citizens 
uh, into this uh, price hikes uh, period that we're going in, or this is more a member state role? No, uh, both. Um, uh, probably you refer to the peak of energy prices. Um, I mean, energy prices, food prices, supermarket prices. Something that affects everybody. People in Berlin cannot find rice. People in Greece see the, uh, the prices skyrocketing. So there is an issue, and there is an issue for support down to the, the base now, not in one, time, one year time or two years time. <clears throat> now, in, in, uh, what we have concerning energy prices, we have taken several measures. Uh, one measure was on the regulatory side to allow member states to um, suspend or to reduce taxes, etc. So what we have uh, managed so far is that more than 70 million people um, receiving uh, lower um, electricity bills than previously. Um, millions of uh, small and medium-sized companies are benefiting from these measures. Uh, at the same time, we have um, agreed in the last European uh, Council to, but this is more medium term, I have to admit, uh, to have a, a joint procurement on gas. Uh, may I say it is something we, the Commission, have already proposed in 2001. Mm. But at that time, Member States said, no way, uh, we do it on our own. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, it's another proof that uh, the Commission is not always wrong um, and is uh, anticipating certain developments. So now we can do it. Uh, so this is on the energy side. Uh, food security is something where, of course, we have now um, given our farmers support also for the um, higher production costs. We have activated uh, the, a certain uh, fund within uh, the, the agricultural fund, 500 millions, to give them support for the uh, quasi work, working capital support mm -hmm. uh, to, to finance the higher uh, production costs. And therefore, and on top, as I said, the, the allowance to use fellow land. And all this should help uh, to increase the production. Uh, and I can only uh, plead to people not to buy now everything and to produce an artificial shortage of food, which is not necessary. There is food security in the Union, and we should not provoke um, a behavior that people are buying uh, and, and trying to, to store as much as possible, because this is also triggering very, prices. It's very interesting that this is more acute in the, in the core countries, the, the, the uh, tendency to stock and pile up uh, yeah. products than yeah. The, the periphery this, yeah. uh, this time. That was weird. Uh, since we don't have so much uh, time ahead of us, I would uh, like to, to stick, since we're here, to the Greek implementation of uh, next generation. As you said, uh, the first money, real money, were uh, dispersed uh, today. And this program has been a bridge uh, between the previous phase of Greece and this phase of uh, Greece. How does it go? What is uh, uh, outlook? I think in general what uh, the COVID crisis has triggered and unfortunately the war has confirmed is uh, the necessity of Europe to gain more, let's say, autonomy in terms of its uh, economic activities. Of course, we cannot uh, avoid and, and uh, so say, get rid of uh, global supply chains and uh, um, uh, um, uh, service change or whatsoever, uh, but we can really look where we can have more um, strategic autonomy. And this is definitely in the area of um, energy uh, supply, energy production, but also energy efficiency. i give you a few examples. Um, 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 I mean, we are heavily depending, and as you know, some countries are unfortunately more depending on one supplier, Russia, others are less. But in general, what we are now pushing, what we have already pushed with Next Generation EU, and here Greece is a frontrunner, is um, also um, <clears throat> investing in renewable energy. Because this is, um, in terms of energy production, the only um, 
possibility for us, the Europeans. We are depending on uh, fossil uh, fuel. Uh, but we also have to invest in energy efficiency. And I, I would very much welcome the and, 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 and um, hope that uh, the initiative already taken two years ago by, by Greece, but also by Cyprus and Egypt uh, to work on a pipeline uh, from, from uh, Egypt uh, to, to provide us with gas is, is one of these examples and we should stick to it. We should invest into it, but also making the, the economy more um, resilient. Also investing in digitalization. I understand I was discussing today with some Greek friends. Um, uh, it's also about um, attracting uh, uh, Greeks living abroad to come back, to invest, to work, because there's a lot of intelligence globally uh, available amongst Greeks, mm -hmm. but it would be good if they return, and I hope that next generation is contributing exactly to these efforts, and I'm rather confident if I'm looking at the performance so far, that this will indeed trigger in the near future the mm -hmm. expected uh, effects. For the last question, I would like again to draw on your uh, experience and the perspective that, you, uh, that you've had through European crisis. There is an opinion shared by economists that this crisis, with the uh, uh, Greek crisis and the debt crisis that Europe experienced, has one common or one analogy. The previous crisis was because we relied too much and uh, without uh, thinking about the risks to uh, easy credit. And this was about relying too much on easy energy. Back in the first crisis, the, uh, the recipe, uh, the prescription, was fast solutions. Do you think that fast solutions is what has to happen now? Quickly cut uh, the reliance to Russian uh, uh, energy, oil and gas? Now, uh, it's, the roles are, are inverted now a little we, Of course, uh, we need some quick reactions, which might not always be the best one or the final solution. But I hope, again, that uh, also uh, the current uh, uh, crisis, the current war, helps all of us, and in particular politicians, to understand what uh, I mean, I, I had a life before I became politician, and this was in, in business. <clears throat> and the first thing I always uh, did when I uh, came into a new company was to look what are the risks. And I think uh, one of the basic uh, uh, so the things one has to do is, uh, as, a, as a manager, as a, um, a business leader, is to, to have um, a kind of risk sharing whatever it is. And, and in that respect, um, Europe or some member states are less um, uh, attentive than others. And I hope we have learned this lesson and try to understand where are our risks, where are our deficiencies, where are our weaknesses. For instance, in a few <clears throat> weeks, we will present as a commission some uh, additional ideas about circular economy. And one should not uh, forget circular economy is on the first, so to say, glance to, to avoid waste, etc. But if you take only our mobile phones, we are throwing away millions per year. But if we would be able to um, salvage the, the, the things that we won't need to import from the China, elements, the real earth, yeah, where we are depending. We, we cannot substitute it, or not immediately. We would reduce also here our dependency. So you see there are many elements which are in a way connected and interlinked, where we could gain more uh, so to say, sovereignty. And more sovereignty finally means also more uh, relevance, more standing, more place value at the global level when it comes to, to negotiate whatever is necessary. So we need new reflexes to adapt in these new war times and this new geopolitical situation in all uh, aspects. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner, Thank for you. this chat. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>